our beautiful specific heat of an alloy lamp and the alloy we've got is a aluminum alloy this is uh, a, a specific alloy and I've got all the ingredients in it uh, it's uh, 6061 aluminum and this is a 2.54 centimeter cube it's just beautiful look at that that is just ideal one of my favorite little things a aluminum cube and uh, we better find its mass because we're interested in what a specific heat in terms of per gram is so we have to know how many grams we're dealing with and my little digital balance is going and I better write that down right now uh, again the milligram amount isn't going to be really valid because I don't have a draft shield there but I can write that down as 44.48 grams. I'm be pretty certain of that uh, centigram amount because the, the milligram amount is showing as zero. And with a 2.54 centimeter cube, you could figure out the density of that aluminum, but we're not in for the density show right now. We're in for the specific heat. Now, we've got our balance going, so we might as well... I'll put this back in my little holder. I've got a holder for this. I've got a, a cube of one of the almost the densest substance on earth, tungsten, and I also have one of magnesium. But let me make sure this is set back to zero, zero, and we'll get our empty calorimeter here. I've got a relatively small calorimeter, uh, and we've got it as 4.37 grams. So uh, I want to get around here and write down 4.37. 37 grams. My balance has a limit of 100 grams, so I'm going to have to be a bit careful in how much material I use. I don't want to go over its limit. Now, I've got the mass of the aluminum. I've got the mass of my uh, empty calorimeter. I'm going to be putting some water in it. I have some chilled water here out of the refrigerator just a few minutes ago, and I do get my aluminum cube heated because right now it's at room temperature and I want to get it up to a higher temperature. I want to get it to 60 degrees Celsius and I'm going to be doing that using a water bath. I'm going to use my uh, sous vide. I love my sous vide water bath and that will get it exactly that temperature but I don't want to get it wet uh, because any water that I transfer over is going to mess things up. So I brought out my food saver here my, and I'm going to, in effect, seal my aluminum cube into the food saver so that it'll be protected from the water. So I'm going to get it going here. Oh, got to turn it on. <laughs> here we go. There. We'll have atmospheric pressure. We'll draw the air out. Atmospheric pressure will squeeze against the cube very, very nicely so that the surface of the cube will be heated well. And, oh, there we go. It's sealing right now. A uh, neat little item. And now I'm going to take this cube and put it in my water heater, my sous vide. Uh, and uh, we'll switch over to that in a second. Here's my aluminum <laughs> cube sealed just beautifully. Okay, uh, just a second and I'll pause. Okay, here you've got a view of my sous vide setup and a Nova one I have set up to uh, 140 degrees uh, Fahrenheit and that's the temperature I want, but I'll need the Celsius temperature. Uh, Alexa, what's 140 degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius? 140 degrees Fahrenheit is 60 degrees Celsius. So we got 60 degrees Celsius. That's uh, medium in terms of the temperature that you'd want to cook a steak. And I just happen to have one here too. So while I'm doing that, I'll do my 
dinner for tonight, I'll put in a petite filet and a lobster tail. And we'll get them up to 60 degrees also. They'll be just perfect for dinner tonight. Uh, Marianne and I will be very, very happy with this. We won't be using the aluminum cube though, not the aluminum cube. So we'll let it soak and get nice and hot. And in the meantime, I'll get everything else ready for a specific heat experiment. Okay, we, we're back. Uh, we've had 20 minutes for the aluminum to get all the joules of energy it would end up getting. It's average kinetic energy being 60.0 degrees on my sous vide. And I've recorded that data already. So I'm ready to take it out of the water bath and put it in some cold water, but I've got to get the cold water together first. I've got the mass of the empty calorimeter already, and now I'm going to uh, pour some cold water that I've had just pulled out of the refrigerator in here. I've got about, let me look, it's about, uh, about roughly 90 mLs, so that'll be about 90 grams of water. Um, again, my balance is limited to 100 grams, so the weight of that together with the calorimeter, which is only four, should still be okay. Uh, let me uh, turn that balance on. It's zeroing, and we'll get the weight of, uh, there we go, uh, of the calorimeter and the water, 93.50 grams. And I'll, I'll write that down with my favorite Dance New York pen, 935 zero grams of the calorimeter and the cold water. And we'll need the temperature of the cold water, uh, which I'm going to take right now, just before I'm ready to put the uh, aluminum cube into it. And I'll get my digital thermometer, make sure it's reading Celsius. It is. And 18, we'll get it in the cold water and we'll see what that is. Okay, I've got the I've got the cold water down to I'll move it around a little, make sure it's uniform, and it is. And a double wall styrofoam container should end up keeping that temperature as 7.4 degrees Celsius. I'll write that down. Don't want to forget that. 7.4 temperature of the water, 7.4 degrees Celsius. Now to get that cube in there as soon as possible because aluminum is a very good conductor of heat and it'll lose its heat quickly. In fact, uh, I'll get that out of the uh, sous vide right now. Here we go, fish it out. I'm gonna very, very quickly open up the plastic. Now it's dry so I don't have to worry about shaking it out. That's why I used uh, the uh, sous vide bag to keep it dry so it wouldn't get wet. I'm gonna put it into the water. Too sweet, here we go, pop in. And its energy is going from hot to cold pretty quickly, like I say, this is aluminum. Now, I might have lost a few joules of heat during the transfer, but I'd try to do it very, very quickly. Like I say, aluminum is pretty quick, has a pretty high uh, conductivity. In fact, in terms of heat conductivity, uh, now a diamond is better, and if I could have used the diamond cube, uh, the change in heat would be really, really fast. In fact, diamond's the best conductor of heat known. One of the ways to check to see if a substance is really diamond is to see how well it conducts heat. They use a double-pronged thermal pen that's heated on one side and takes the temperature on the other. And here we go. The temperature is 12.2. It's been warmed up. And it looks like it's t being pretty stable here at 12.2. It's not rising anymore. So probably all the heat that was even buried inside that cube has had a chance to escape. And, you know, 12.2 for the past 30 seconds or so, and hasn't changed at all. My styrofoam is a good insulator. If there was any heat coming from the outside, we probably noticed it raise in temperature. So I'm moving this aluminum cube around and flipping it and moving it and indeed 
temperature is staying rock solid at 12.2 degrees Celsius. So we had a temperature increase, oh, it looks like about, you know, five, a little bit less than five degrees Celsius. So we'll probably have about a two significant digit specific heat value to be accurate. And, you know, that's not too bad because specific heat does change with temperature. Uh, in fact, the specific heat of water changes from 4.18 1, to 4.19 as you cool it down. We'll use the 4.18 for our specific heat. Okay, 12.2 degrees is our final temperature here. Uh, by the way, if we would have used a diamond, it would have had a higher specific heat. Uh, it has a lot more atoms in it. There we go. Oh, it just went up to 12.4, but that could be from the heat from the outside. And so I put down grams. That's the wrong degrees Celsius. So let's see. Uh, we've got our aluminum cube. I'll fish it out of here. One of my favorite little things. Oh, I'm going to have to drain the water. Here we go, my chili cube. I'm going to put it here on my display. In a later experiment, we'll get a chance to see my tungsten cube uh, and compare that with my magnesium cube, too. So here we're set. My hands are wet. We've completed the experiment, and now we just have to do the calculations. Not only the calculations, but also I've got to fish out my prime rib, my petite filet and lobster, and get them on the grill and have dinner. Okay, bye.